Hello everybody and welcome back. Man, I didn't upload a video in like forever. I had a lot of private problems and private obligations, so I couldn't do anything. So I took a break for like six months, but now I'm back. So I hope we do something good right now. Um, as you can see, I worked on the lighting the lighting is much better and I hope that the sound is much better too. Tell me if you like it. Uh, today I'm going to do something really simple and that is I'm going to assemble a kit. Here's a kit. And many of you would say, dude, that's that's not a kit. That, that thing doesn't even have a solder mask on it, right? Well, that's true. It doesn't. It's because I made this board. It is homemade. And uh, what did I do? I did the old fashioned toner transfer method. So uh, how do you do that method? Well, it's easy. First you make a sketch of a product you'd like to assemble. Then you print it out on some glossy paper. Then uh, you transfer the sketch from the paper to the copper and then you etch it with an etchant. And then after etching, you remove the copper everywhere except the places where your sketch lines are. And those same sketch lines, when you remove the toner from the board, remain in copper. Now, you may see that there are some dyes on them, but that was actually my fault because when I was removing the toner, some of the dye was still left on the PCB. But yes, now, which circuit is this? What am I making? What are we going to solder? What we're making right now is a very simple circuit and it's a motor speed controller based on the 555 timer. It's really simple. Uh, it has a potentiometer where you can adjust the duty cycle and these two diodes prevent the frequency from changing because we're running a slow motor. Uh, the frequency must not uh, go over a hundred hertz. So uh, the duty cycle is changeable, but it doesn't go over a hundred hertz. And then after, as you can see on, on the output of pin number three, we have a MOSFET that turns on and on, turns the motor on and off, thus adjusting its speed. Now, why did I go through all the trouble of making my own PCB. Am I going to start manufacturing this? Well, no, because this is a very simple circuit and manufacturing it would be extremely stupid because you can get stuff like this for a buck on AliExpress. I was just um, curious. I, uh, I actually wanted to send the circuit to send the Gerber files, uh, the JLC PCB to manufacture my own. But I was like, wait a minute, I'm a chemist. I can do this. I went for it. I just bought a copper copper cladded board. I believe that's how it's called, right? And I etched it, I tinted up, and voila, we have it. So um, yes, it's a very simple circuit. I'm going to solder all of the components right now. And I'm going to be testing a new soldering iron. Now here it is. This is a soldering iron. Now. Uh, this is not a new design, by all means. It's an El Cheapo uh, temperature controlled soldering iron. It's not a soldering station, it's a soldering iron. And I completely fell in love with the design. So I'm going to be soldering with it. And in the future, I'll make a video why these soldering irons are maybe much better than the soldering station that. I bought uh, almost a year ago. Yeah, they're much more efficient. They heat up much quicker and they transfer the heat much better. And as you can see, I just turned on the soldering iron and it's already hot. It's already melting solder. So yeah. Okay, so let's start.
Okay, so I have no idea how much of the footage I've lost, but this is how much I've soldered. I was done with the resistors, I got the shot key diodes, I got the capacitors, I got the header pins, and I soldered a triple five timer. The next thing is the MOSFET. Let's solder the MOSFET. So the last, but not least, is the potentiometer. Now, the moment of truth, it's time to test the circuit. Okay, so I finally got it to work. Uh, the only problem is, that it doesn't really regulate speed of the motor. I can change the potentiometer as much as I want, but the speed is not being regulated. Okay, so guys, your boy was being extremely stupid. When I was assembling this thing that I said in the video previously that uh, is my design. I mean, it is my design. And uh, yeah, it was based on a real circuit. But there was a fundamental mistake. In the entire design. For those attentive of you guys will see this. Oh my god. This schematic was made in Fritzing. Many of you know Fritzing. It's a well sort of a hobbyist software uh, where you can create schematics and PCBs. I don't know how this slipped by me but I reversed the polarities and 12 volts was going into the ground pin and ground was going into the, and that's why the chip caught on fire well the first thing that happened was this resistor the 22 ohm resistor this one caught on fire it completely burnt and i was like whoa what did i do Maybe I, maybe I connected, maybe I connected the power to the wrong pin. Maybe I connected the power uh, in reverse of the MOSFET or something. I, I don't know what my re reasoning was, to be honest. And then I replaced it with a higher value. And then, boom, the 555 timer died. Wow. People say it takes real courage to admit when you're a dumbass. But, so yeah, <laughs> here I am, I admit, I was a complete dumbass. And, um, yeah, but, ta-da, I redesigned the circuit. Let me refocus. Now, it says 9 volts plus 12 volts. Yeah, next time when you print the schematics, uh, just correct mistakes like these uh, hold a moment let me get a pen so here it is it's not 9 volts it's 12 volts so this time it's good and this time I added a flyback diode because uh, a motor I, it says a pump here because it was supposed to control a peristaltic pump uh, the motor is an inductive load and if you know anything about inductors they store energy in a magnetic field and unlike capacitors capacitors don't like the voltage changes uh, the inductors don't like current changes so uh, when you disconnect the power um, they have the ability to maintain the current by increasing the voltage immensely and that 
at some point would probably fry this MOSFET. So when you put a flyback diode, the energy that was stuck in a magnetic field would just circle around here. It won't just shoop, rush through the MOSFET. And yes, this is basically it. I flipped it around and I added a flyback diode. This was all that was needed to make, ta-da, a working model. And yes, this time I marked which one is positive and which one is negative. So I won't make the same mistake again. So yes, this is the, this is the potentiometer. This is the 55 high timer. This is an IRF Z44N MOSFET. Uh, this is the flyback diode that's here. And this is, these are the motor pins. It really doesn't matter how you connect them uh, because it's a, it's a brushed DC motor. But over here, I don't want to mix up the polarity again. So yeah, uh, of course, I would like to congratulate myself this time that I made a stunning looking PCB compared to the last one. The last one was uh, the last one was looking a little bit like um, Pupu Kaka. But this one this one looks amazing. I like it. Uh, oh yeah, uh, another thing. This is an M for my name. Uh, but I forgot to flip it vertically. So when you <laughs> put the design on, you would uh, see it the right way around so it's in reverse but again it kind of gives it some charm the functionality of this circuit okay so the moment of truth let's turn on the power supply booyah the motor works and yes we are able to control the speed So yeah, <laughs> I guess I can call this a success. So we went from this crappy thing that almost burned everything uh, with reverse polarity with no flyback diode to this, the perfected design. This, this is all a part of a bigger project but I will disclose what I'm working on once it's complete because I'm still working on it and I'm working on it on the download. It's not my main job. But again, <laughs> thank you for watching your boy who was being dumb. Please don't be like me. Just take it slow, think in advance and you will create some great stuff. And if you want me to make a video on etching circuit boards, then say so. I'd be happy to make it. So yeah, <laughs> thanks for watching everybody and see you in the next video and hopefully it won't be six months between uploads. Thank you very much. Bye.